And so I know because I've been arrested before, you know, and then and I learned, I said, well, there's no signs that, you know, look at that guy, he's using the camera. I'm using the tape measure. What? No, you can't do that. That's okay. And so I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm hiding the fact that I'm taking that measurement, you know? So yeah, that's one of the reasons that they follow me because I say things like this and then they hear about it and they do. As a matter of fact, the, when I had the private entrance the last time, my, my tour guide, uh, my connection in Egypt uh, told me that uh, everybody knows me at antiquities and they're all hoping that they don't get me because somebody from antiquities is always signed, assigned to someone who's been given access to the, the pyramid and a private entrance. They don't want to be with me because I'm going to do something and then they're going to get in trouble because he did it while I, w- I was under their <laughs> watch. watch I'm, yeah. always, I'm always trying to beat the, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. That's why I say I'm the real Indiana Jones, you know, the, the, he's, that's fiction, but I'm real. Like I really do that stuff. And it's why, why? Because it's intellectual curiosity. It's because I know just what you've alluded to and everything you said, this is a puzzle that was placed there to be solved. Yes. There is a puzzle. When you look at a crossword puzzle in the New York Times, do you think that was just randomly put together? Someone spent time putting that together and you can only solve it by spending time thinking about it. what has six letters and you know is the same as the word lamb. You've got to do that. Okay. So I know that there's encoded wisdom here and I'm trying to find it. So if I got to kind of hide a tape measure or something, I'm going to do it, you know? And so, I mean, and so, so the, that's the first point. You can't, you really do what I'm doing, but you, there are ways to do it, you know? So I do it the ways that I can, you know, that, where it does, you know, you can't prove, Hey, what do you mind? I'm taking pictures. This is my phone. You can't take my phone. I'm taking pictures like everybody else, you know? So, so, so then when I, then I take it to what truly are high tech tools, for instance, this is my recent discoveries and I still can't believe I discovered this and this is going to have to get bigger because other people are going to see this. It's, I did a series of videos about the Holy shaft. Mm-hmm. Now we'll mm-hmm. see if that name stands because you know, the King's chamber, it's not really a King's chamber, but that's the name they use in the, the Queen's chamber. Well, it's not really a Queen's chamber, but that sticks the trial passages. They're not really the trial passages. Mark Laner calls them the replica passages. And there's a whole story there. Okay. So Holy shaft. Someone's going to have to name because there's this 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 uh, shaft I found that's on the Giza plateau that no one notices. It's unobtrusive. It's nothing, and it's connected to everything. It is like it is like the 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 pineal gland. You know how how sexy is the pineal gland if you just look at it? And there's a sloppy little bladder. There's an ugly little lizard. I mean, how, how sexy does it be? And then, so I found this little, and you know what? What I found is through the modern technology we're talking about, you can measure things on Google Earth. And I'm led to believe it's a pretty accurate measurement because the GPS that, used, that uses that measurement is the same one that keeps the car going 100 miles, well, 70 miles an hour on a California highway that has no driver in it, staying about this far apart from the car that's coming the other way. So the same technology that keeps the driverless car from hitting everything is the same GPS technology that Google Earth uses when I'm drawing their little line across there to tell me it's 59 inches, it's 58 feet, it's 47 meters. That's, I'm connected to that same massive technology, right? So what I found is from the holy shaft, it's an even 100 feet to almost everything. Wow. Now, you could cherry pick a little bit. Like if I, if I say, well, I'm going to measure from my hat, the stay you're sitting next to me, from my hat to your head. Well, I could measure from this part of my hat over to you. I could measure from this part of my hat over you. Get a little different. But given, the, given that fudge factor, first of all, take into account that I said, I am going to avoid that by taking the center of the holy shaft. So all my measurements are taken from the center. So that cuts down any fudge factor from that point. But now when I'm going to the Sphinx, so I could touch the Sphinx's tail, I could touch his head. So I want to touch a part of the Sphinx that's like, you know, that's the Sphinx, okay? And so I found that the Holy Shaft is almost an exact 100 feet from everything, the trial passages, okay? You know, I mean, name name any feature you're aware of on the Giza Plateau. The... uh, the Osiris shaft that yeah. Brian Foster and everybody goes to, you spend, you spend the big money to take the expensive tour. And now you go down to, you know, hundreds of feet below the Giza plateau. It's exactly 200 feet from the Holy shaft. I mean, every major thing that is incredible. And I, and the way I first found it, I, I discovered what I called the Holy circle. I, I found in Will Wire, a uh, good graphics friend of mine, 
we found the circle that goes around that holy center, that holy shaft, it's exactly 888 feet to the southeast corner of Khufu. It's exactly 888 feet to the Sphinx. It's exactly 888 feet to the center of Ken Kawes, And it's exactly 888 feet directly west, touching the Khafre Pyramid. Eight, what are the chances? And I did, I did it on Google Earth too. I, I only, I, I first realized that the, you know this was there, but then it's exactly 888 feet, and that's what led me to think. Well, it's it's exactly 888 feet to those four major monuments on the Giza Plateau, and it's plainly the center point. I wonder what else it might be connected to, and that led me to do this thing. And I've done a couple programs on it, where it's unbelievable. So so people are going to have to. It's going to be very hard to say that's coincidence, that chance he cherry picked that. Uh uh, do it yourself. Look what I did. That's a, ma that's a major discovery. And so, one of the things that came at me, which I've never answered yet, is you saying the Egyptians knew feet because they built the pyramid in royal cubits, uh, the second of the seven to 11 second, and, and they built it in royal cubits. As a matter of fact, oftentimes when I'm trying to figure something out, you know, the measurements will be given me of this pyramid in meters. You know, the, the, the Egyptologists who studied it measured it in meters. So I will convert them to royal cubits. And when I come to even numbers, I know I'm on to something mm. because the Egyptians did build with royal cubits. Well, long story short, what Robert Grant and Alan Green and many others have shown, the meter, the foot, and the cubit are aboriginal. They're connected ontologically you know, and I, I could say more about that, but, but, and I just saw Robert Grant answer somebody plainly, the meter is used in the King's chamber. And he, and he gives examples. It's exactly, I think, uh, you know, 314 uh, meters around three, in other words, 3.1415, it's pi, yeah. pi yeah. meters around the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all kinds of examples you can show. The people who are going to say, no, it can't be, no, it can't be, are going to really have to start fighting a lot of evidence. And so for me, it's easy to say there's an aboriginal connection, and I could explain it geometrically and stuff too. For instance, you take a one meter pendulum, just take a one meter pendulum. So here's exactly one meter, the modern meter, swing it at 30 degrees. It swings out exactly pi over six, because it's 30 degrees out of a 360 circle, pi over six, which is exactly one royal cubit. So one meter swung at 30 degrees, swings out an arc of exactly one royal cubit. And it takes, by the way, exactly one second. So now it's connected to time and the rotation of the earth. So you don't have to go far. You don't have to go far to show an ontological aboriginal connection to cubit meter foot. So I, I haven't really answered that yet to the people that say, you're saying the Egyptians knew the foot. I'm saying there's a tremendous intelligence in operation here, people. I'm not saying what the Egyptians knew because I think it's more than them, but there's a tremendous intelligence at play here. Okay. Yeah. Just mind blowing. So just for clarity, what is the foot uh, in comparison to the cubit? What's the difference size wise? Uh, to, what I always use, and then this is going to depend if you just go, you know, uh, pi over six, it's 20.6 inches in a Royal cubit. Okay. So it's just shy of a foot. Well, 20.6 Oh, inches, inches for in a, one cubit. In, in oh, okay, just shy. So, feet. I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't give you a foot royal cubit connection. I gave you an inch royal cubit connection. I mean, you can do the conversion just divide by twelve, or you know. That's right. And, okay. And, yes, sir. Okay, yes. two. Okay. Uh, you know what I love about the uh, shaft that you're talking about is is that this feels very Indiana Jones, doesn't it? This feels very. <laughs> there is a mystery here. Uh, and you found it in a very indescript way. While other people are looking at the the forest you're you're seeing the trees you're you're looking at the other people see the great pyramid and they their focus goes there but it's kind of the indiana jones connection in my mind is the uh, holy grail whenever he goes in to pick the grail it's not this ornate beautiful thing it's this crappy little cup over here that's what of course it would have been yeah. just like your yeah. your your great shaft that that is sort of the key to unlocking all the mysteries around it it's very indescript it's very out of the way there's no neon signs pointing towards it but you found it that is and, and, Jones. You, you know what really excites me along those lines brandon we just talked about how yesterday or today depending on how you count the, the where the, the difference in time between egypt and here they moved the the khufu boat from uh the uh from the giza plateau to the new gem museum 
Well, one of the reasons they did that, they said, because they weren't going to, the whole point was that, you know, there were two boats found there right next to each other. The, the current solar boat pit that was just moved, that's on the east of the south side. But there was another boat found on the west part of the south side. That was the one that they that uh, Bob Breyer, the Egyptologist, was working on reconstructing and doing a video about it. And then they were going to take that one to the gym. So it'd be one at the gym and one left at Giza. The reason they decided to take both of them, one of the reasons that Antiquity stated was because they that side of the pyramid has been off limits to everybody. And they went because they're building tourism. They want people. I'm so excited because I have... I, one of my marks is I've learned to start interpreting this language of the markings on the north and the east side. Now the south side is going to be open to me. I'll be able to go in there and find marks that have in the in the providence of things and the synchronicity of things are just now going to be open. So when I go in October, that's going to be one of the places where I spend a lot of time because I'm assuming that they'll have moved the the uh, the, the uh, foundations and stuff for that museum and moved it out so they can let tourist traffic go in there. Because again, that's one of their stated goals. I wouldn't have thought in the past that wouldn't have been a high goal of antiquities to let people at the pyramid. That's almost antithetical to the way they used to think. But there's a new thinking. Think about this. The Egyptian government did the strange and wonderful thing of combining two departments of state that nobody else combines. You've got on one hand, you've got uh, the, the uh, antiquities sifting through every grain of sand, this conservative science, you know, don't give too much, you know, don't let people see it, preserve the pyramid. And then on the other hand, you've, you've got, uh, you know, tourism. Hey, come to Egypt. It's the greatest place in the world. Yes. So you've got the hype of tourism. They combine those two departments. And so now tourism and antiquities are the same department. So what's happening is this thing is taken over now. Antiquities used to be this concern. We can't, Zahia Watch used to say, don't let people in the Great Pyramid. We'll just have a museum outside and they'll see it virtually. No, no, don't do that. You know, and so now that they've done, they want people to come. They want people to experience Egypt. And so they want them to walk on the south side of the pyramid. So they're probably going to move all their foundations and stuff out of there. So people, so the traffic can flow around the south side of the pyramid. So that's great. I'm wow. looking forward to, to looking at the marks that'll be left after they move those boat pits and stuff. That's so exciting. And we're going to keep up with you, man. Uh, we'll probably wrap it up here, but it was, tell me one more amazing thing. Like what, what it just blows your mind about this complex over there in Giza? Okay. Well, one thing, and this is one of my discoveries with my friend, uh, Bob, uh, Bob Criley, who's uh, an engineer is I discovered the Hemenu template. Now it's,